You are listening to the Horse Radio Network, part of the Equine Network family. Welcome to the Dressage Today podcast, Training Buzz. These short podcasts bring you the best tips straight from our subscription video site, Equestrian Plus. To get full access to over 5,000 videos, go to equestrianplus.com and enter DT Podcast to get 15% off your first month subscription. Now, listen in on this week's buzz and enjoy the ride. Welcome to this week's training buzz, sponsored by Cosequin. Cosequin, the number one veterinarian recommended joint health supplement brand, is excited to announce the launch of its newest supplement, Cosequin ASU Balance. This advanced formula supports joint, immune, and digestive health. Cosequin ASU Balance helps moderate the inflammatory responses that can cause immune and GI tract disturbances through the innovative inclusion of postbiotics and beta-glucans. The formula also includes the comprehensive joint support Cosequin is known for with ingredients such as ASU, hyaluronic acid, and Boswellia serrata extract. With over 30 years behind the Cosequin name, you can rely on Cosequin products when performance matters. To learn more, speak with your veterinarian or visit Cosequin.com. Today, Hear a bit from Olympic dressage rider Adrienne Lyle as she works with an adult amateur rider whose horse is not moving forward off the leg. Tempo is the top priority for this pair before they work on things like straightness and bend. Lyle also stresses to keep the hands as quiet as possible when adding energy to avoid giving the horse mixed signals. Then you two can keep working a little bit that your eyes are staying up where you're going so that you don't get your eyes buried down in the withers and lose a little sight of where you are in that ring. Good. And you can ask for a little bit more energy there in the walk now. Good. So kind of thinking through my checklist, you know, what is my priority? And I think first you've got to make sure that he's going on his own, you know, that you have the energy you want. Then from that, you can work a little bit on that straightness and that respect off the left side that you want. But if you haven't created at least a first enough engine that he's taking you a little bit, you're not going to be as successful trying to create the straightness. So just kind of make focus of first that priority that he stays in the tempo you want. Good. And now gather up your reins just a little bit. So you have a little bit more of a connection. And as you do this, focusing just that the tempo doesn't slow down. Eyes up where you want to go. Don't even worry about the crookedness yet. Worry about the tempo. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. There and pet him for that. And now get real quiet, even if it's just for a stride. The second he slows down, tempo back up again. And not feeling like you need to be doing anything necessarily in front when you ask for a quicker tempo. And sometimes when we kind of know him, we start to anticipate, oh, he's going to come up in the bridle or he's going to do this. So you start doing all these things in front before... He actually does it. So you're kind of giving unnecessary aid. So you try to keep those hands as quiet as possible when you're adding energy in the walk. And if his head comes up, I don't care if he gets crooked. I don't care right now. Stay quiet and just focus on, am I getting a reaction to the leg? Good. And you can take even still just a tick more contact till you have just a soft feel of both sides of his mouth. Just focus on the tempo. One, two, three, four. Good. And then kind of... Learn to look at your reins and, and recognize where your rein length is. I still think you can shorten them another inch or two. It can still be a stretching thought, but so that we have a, some sort of connection there. And don't get busy with your right hand either. So if you are going to use the whip on him, try to think about how you just rotate your wrist to use it. And don't do it in a way that also bumps him in the mouth at the same time. Because again, that's kind of like hitting the gas in the brake. If we touch pull in the mouth at the same time we're adding the leg, he's not entirely sure which one he should listen to. So he's going to default to listening to the one that takes the least amount of effort. <laughs> Good. Good. The quieter you can keep your hand, the more he'll start to kind of search for the correct contact there. And again, one more inch shorter in that rain. You have to take enough feel that you feel like you have to ride with a little bit of connection. Good. Good. And then the, those fingers are going to stay closed around that rain so that when you do, when he does pull against it, he's not going to pull the reins through your hands. Good. And let's just change direction once in a walk before we go to the trot. Quiet in the hands. Don't worry about him coming up. Worry about the tempo, because most likely that's happened because he slowed down on you. Yeah, back it up with a little tap of the whip. Say, take me seriously. Good. 
And you have to stay asking until you actually feel the tempo increase. That's important. You can't just say, I'm going to tap him twice for the sake of tapping it, you know. If you're asking for an increase in tempo, you can't take the aid, can't stop the aid until he answers. So even if that means sending him forward to trot for a step, like there I'd make him trot for a step because you tapped him and he didn't really have that dramatic of a change in tempo of the walk. So go ahead and make him trot a step. Good. Now tell him good boy. And now you can come back to walk so that we're never just going through, especially the driving aids. We're not just going through the motions, you know, saying, oh, he slowed down. I tapped him. Well, if you tapped him and nothing happened, then he's going to learn that if I just ignore one tap or if I just ignore two taps, she stops tapping me. So you have to every time kind of tune in and say, did he in fact give me a reaction that I wanted? And if not, then I'm not going to stop asking the question. And if that means you have to take the correction all the way to a trot step so that you can reward him, then that's what you have to do. Because I always say you don't want to ever go 75% of the way there. You don't want to ask and ask and ask and ask and then stop because then you're just teaching him to, to ignore you and you never get to the most importantly, you never get to the place you can reward. You know, once we get to the place where they do give you the right reaction and we can reward them, that's when they start to want to give you the right reaction. So if we stop 75% of the way there and we never get to the place where they we can praise them because they did it right, there's not a whole lot of incentive for them to want to try harder for us. Good. So just focus a few times on that and adding a little leg. If nothing happens, giving him a little bump. If nothing happens, tapping. Now stay after it till he's trotting because you tapped him. Yeah, now pet him. Now say good boy and fuss on him a little. Let him know that was the right answer. And then you sit quiet and just repeat that same process a few times, but taking it to the point where you can reward him because he gave you the right reaction. That's going to be the most important thing. We hope you enjoyed this bonus podcast. Remember, go to equestrianplus.com to subscribe to our online catalog and enter DT Podcast to get 15% off your first month. Thanks for listening.